Hello and welcome to part two of our 3D modeling session in Rhino. In the last session we looked at extruding walls and using the Boolean difference and Boolean union tool to kind of cut holes in walls and add 3D shapes together. Now I've modeled some extra pieces on this building and I've kind of connected up my floor plates you can see here I've got these external columns now I've added in window openings on all my levels and I've just tidied up the model and that was just using the extrude tool and the boolean difference and the boolean union tool that we looked at in the last session so no new stuff has been covered since then so we're going to start by looking at the creation of the staircase in three dimensions and then also looking at how we can use blocks that we've set up in our 2D drawing in the last session we covered and start to kind of use these in three dimensions and help us quickly model up doors and windows as well. So we're going to start with the staircase. I'm going to first just hide my external walls so it makes it easier for me to see. And I'm just going to select my stairs layer so I'm not modeling in that. Now, in our 2D drawing, we kind of worked out the width of our stairs and how long they are, but we don't know the height at the moment. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm just going to draw a line and I'm going to do the stairs from this first floor to the floor above. So we're just going to draw a line and we're going to attach it to the stair above it. Now, I've got 12 steps in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this line and we're going to divide it just using the divide command. And this will just split the line into equal segments. And this helps us then know where to place our steps vertically going up. And I'm actually going to divide it into 13 segments, not 12, because the top step is not going to meet flush with the floor. It's going to meet one step below. So then the next step up is the right floor level. So I always do one more division than stairs I have. So hit 13 and hit enter. And you'll see there it's divided the line now into 13 equal segments. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to model the first step. So we're just going to use the box tool for this. And we're going to draw out the footprint of the step like so. And we're going to take its height from this first division line here. So we're just snapping onto that to give us the height of the stairs like so. Now I'm kind of already worked out the height and length of the stairs beforehand and when you're designing steps it can be quite tricky to sort of work that out. So I might actually be releasing a lesson later down the line on using Grasshopper to quickly work out stairs and I'll be kind of showing an introduction to Grasshopper and how to use it as a quick way to calculate stairs in between floor plates rather than sort of taking a number, dividing it and doing it the manual way. But we'll go through that at the later stage. So for now we've got our stair height and stair width. Now all we need to do is copy this up diagonally to meet the floor above. And to do that we're going to be using the same array tool that we did in 2D but we're just going to be using it in three dimensions. So first I'm going to take a polyline and I'm going to draw a line from the top edge of this step to the point where it's connecting to on the floor above. So we've just got a diagonal line leading from the top of the step to the top of the stairs on the next level. Then we'll select the step we want to copy and before we copy it we're actually going to make it into a block and I'll go into a bit more detail later down on why we've done this but you'll see sort of moving forward so we're just going to make a block, give it its base point, that kind of point on the line and then just call it step one. So with that selected, we're then going to use the array curve tool, select our line, the diagonal line we've drawn, because that's the curve we're going to be arraying along, so copying upwards to the floor above. And then the number of items is 13 steps, because we've got 13 divisions here. If we hit OK, you see then it's now copied those steps all the way up to the top and we've got this one extra one which is kind of in the floor so we can delete that if we want. There. And they're all the same size equally spaced moving up to our floor above. Now because we've made this into a block what that means is 
let's say I want to add a kind of tread or a step to the edge of each of these steps. All I have to do is select one of these, type in block edit. You see it now grays out everything just like we did before in 2D, but now we're just working in three dimensions. I'm then going to add in a kind of small, let's make it 40 mil here. And just extend it out by 25. And then I'm going to join these together actually as well. Also, when you're using the Boolean union tool, you might find that when you've unified a shape, it still has the kind of two boxes together, and you might want it to just look like one solid object. To do that, if you select the shape, and in your solid tools, so just under this setting here, there's an option called Merge Coplanar Faces, and if you right-click that, it will then merge it together into one solid shape, so it looks a lot neater. It might be also that you want to kind of chop off the back of this step. I'm just going to use the Boolean Difference tool to do that. And then I'm just going to actually add on a smaller kind of diagonal thickness to this step. Let's make it 100 mil. And then we're going to just unify that together to finish it off and merge it. There. So we've sort of refined our step now, so it's a bit more detailed. Now, because all of these are the same block instance, if I then hit OK, it's then, then done it to all our steps simultaneously. And that's such a quick way of just quickly kind of adjusting everything in turn. That's why it's really useful to use blocks wherever you have an element that's the same on kind of copied again and again within your project and you see how much time it saves you rather than doing it for every single step going up. So I really recommend using blocks as much as you can whenever you have repeated elements. Now that step's made, I can delete the rest of these points if you don't want them anymore, because they were just there to help us kind of guide the step along. Sometimes I might keep that line because it's quite useful moving forward when you want to make handrails or balustrades. Um, we're not going to be looking at that in this session, but we might cover that moving forward in the other sessions. So I'm just going to keep that in place for now. And also what I might do is I might then group these stairs together. So I might just, an easy way to do that is just to right click on the stairs layer, select the objects in that layer, and then just type in group. And what a group is, it's just kind of it's not like Boolean Union where you're unifying the shapes, it's just a temporary group. So when you click on those objects, they are selected all at once. And if you want to then break the group, you can just type in ungroup, and it will split it back into single objects. So it's just a quick way of grouping together a series of objects that you want to kind of have as one solid group and it's a useful way to do that to help your modeling moving forward. So that's simple stairs creation using blocks and the array curve tool. We're now going to look at modeling in doors in more detail and this is going to be a kind of a continuation of blocks as well and how we use those in the last session. So when we were in 2D we actually made these doors using the block command and each of them are the same block instance. So we're going to start with this internal door and you'll notice in the properties it says it's door one block instance. So that means we know that these are all the same block. That's quite useful kind of moving forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this 2D door out and we're going to model it in 3D. So we're just going to explode that block out and we're going to start to model this door up in three dimensions. So I'm going to just go to my doors layer, I'm going to delete the swing there, and we're just going to extrude up these side pieces. Now, normal height of a door is 2.1 meters, so this would just be the frame of the door here. I'm just going to model in the top piece as well, just using the box tool. So you'll see how I'm kind of using the box tool and the boolean tools 
to help me model here. And really those kind of modeling techniques we covered in the first part of this lesson are the sort of most widely used modeling techniques I'll kind of use going forward. So it's just a combination of modeling with boxes, Boolean addition, Boolean difference to subtract pieces and using all those skills together. So there we have a simple door frame and then I'm just going to model up this door just using the box tool again. Like so. So now I've got my three dimensional simple door here. I'm just going to select those objects and I'm going to make this into a new block. So we're just going to type in block, select the base point in the corner, which was the same base point that I'd made my 2D doors in. And this is quite important that whenever you make base points, try and kind of match them up with similar objects and you'll see why in a second. So we're just going to call this door 3D type. 3D type 1. Yep, okay, so that's now our block, see in our properties. Now we're going to now use a function called block replace, and what this can do is if we select one of our 2D doors, which is also a block, so you have to have two blocks to be able to use this command. So if we then type in replace block. Here. It says there are five additional instances that reference this block. That means there are five other 2D doors we have in place. And it's asked me if we want to select all of these other instances. So for this case, I want to make all these doors 3D. So I'm going to just say yes, all please. So they're all selected. And then it asks us select instance using design block definition. So this is the 3D door we want to replace our 2D door with. So that's over here. So all I have to do now is select my 3D door. And it's now replaced all my 2D doors with the new 3D door I've made. There you go. So it's a really, really quick way of modeling up 3D doors and replacing them all over the plan. I could have kind of 100 of these doors which I want to replace. And that's just a really quick way of just taking one and replacing them all simultaneously with something I've already modeled. Now, we can actually use this to kind of set up multiple different types of doors and quickly interchange them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly model up a couple of different types of doors and windows as well and just show you how to do that. So now I've modeled a few different types of door and a type of window here, and we can now just go around and interchangeably replace our blocks as we need to. So let's say I kind of wanted this porthole door on a couple of these. So we could select these two, type replace block. And this time I'm not going to select all the instances, I just want these two. So I'm just going to hit enter there and then select my block. And you see there it's now replaced it for my porthole. I've got my kind of front door here, which was a glass door. So we can select that type in place block again, select all this time and select my glass door and change that. I've got a couple more actually down here which they've just automatically replaced. Now you'll see on this I've replaced it but because my door was rotated at a different angle it's actually then reverted back to its original rotation so you need to be careful sort of how you originally draw, drew your block. I think I originally drew this glass block at a different orientation so when I've replaced it it's replaced it in the wrong angle so we might then need to just redraw this block so it's rotated in the correct way like this one was or we can just replace it and rotate it into place. Um, I can also do it for the windows here so select my window block, replace block select all of them and replace this window I've modeled and there we go we've replaced all our windows and actually if I turn my walls back on because they were sat on the 2d plan they're sort of a bit lower so we can with all of those selected I'm just going to move them vertically up 1000 which was my window so high and they're now sitting in their correct place so very quickly using blocks we can add in more detail into the windows and doors and then we can go back and edit and change things 
very quickly and all the other references of that block will update at the same time. So it allows us to add a lot of detail into our 3D models really, really quickly. And just using that block replace technique, once we've drawn a block once, you don't have to then copy it into place again. All you have to do is replace it and update it with the newer version. And I'll often have my 2D blocks set up and I might have a series of 3D block doors, which I'll then go about and replace in with my geometry in my model. So it might be that I have kind of five different types of windows and I want to change this for an opening window. We can just select it from the block and replace it. So it allows us to really quickly kind of make changes to our model and it's a very efficient way of working. So I definitely recommend getting used to using blocks and I'll be kind of using them a lot going forward as well. So it's a really good one to get into the habit of using because it will save you a lot of time moving forward. So that's what we're covering in this session. So we've just looked at using the array tool to create the staircase there and then using the block replace tool and the block tool to help us quickly chop and change windows and doors and model these up in Rhino. There we go. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next session.